week, we've been highlighting some of the game-changing private companies that made this year's CNBC's Disruptor 50 list of the most innovative startups. Which brings me to the one I probably care more about than any other, number 45, DraftKings, a company that's revolutionizing one of my favorite pastimes, as you know, fantasy sports, which also happens to be one of the few ways to le legally gamble on the Internet. How does it work? DraftKings offers daily, not week, not month, daily fantasy contests across a host of sports, uh, basketball, football, baseball, hockey, soccer, mixed martial arts, golf, now NASCAR. You pay an entry fee ranging from less than $1 to over 1000 and then you draft your players. You can get cash prizes of varying degrees when you win. Unlike traditional fantasy leagues, which can be, of course, extremely time-consuming, DraftKings offers new rapid-fire contests every day. Even better, after acquiring the third and fourth largest competitors in the space last year, DraftKings is now basically operating a duopoly with FanDuel. And the company just got a huge stamp of approval last month, reportedly in the form of $250 million investment from Disney, which, remember, is the owner of ESPN. That deal is not closed. Yet. So let's take a closer look with Jason Robbins and Matt Kalish, the co-founders of DraftKings. Mr. Robbins, Mr. Kalish, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you. First, uh, we have a present that we bought for you, brought for you. DraftKings swag. Here you go. Oh, my God. Oh, man, that is just fabulous. Yeah. You guys know. I mean, I talk about it with my buddy Adam Schefter from ESPN, and we're just trying not to be addicted. That's my whole goal is to not be addicted, even to sports that I'm not that interested in. Uh, but I'm going to ask you a question I think a lot of us ask. Like, how did you think of it, and how come we didn't? Well, it's actually Matt's idea, so I'll <laughs> let him talk about it. It was yeah. so obvious, but how come you know? <laughs> I'm not kidding. You thought of it and we didn't. What, how did you know? Yeah, I think we just all really loved sports for pretty much our entire life. You know, I, I grew up in Boston, a huge sports fan, you know, watching Larry Bird and, you know, Bledsoe sure. and Tom Brady and these guys and um, got into fantasy sports during college in a really big way. And, uh, you know, when I met Jason uh, at Capital One back in 2005, you know, we shared a lot of the same interests right. and, you know, played a bunch of leagues together. And, you know, we always had that entrepreneurial bug. We were looking for, you know, what could we do that would be something, you know, that could kind of change the game in sports. And this is what we what we came up with. Well, let me ask you, just how many uh, people play who initially weren't that interested even in the sport because I imagine that all the networks all of the at all of the companies that own teams have to be enamored of what you're doing oh well you know for us that's the best part of it is that there's this virtuous combination with them that drives content which then in turn drives more consumption of our game and back and forth and it lifts everything uh, we've seen from surveys we've done that about 50% of our customers report that even though they all come in on a sport they like, they all try that first, they have since adopted and gotten into a sport watching, not just playing on DraftKings, but watching on TV, following it that they were not previously following it before. And the same thing I, I, I want to ask you, Matt, uh, the fourth quarter or the last three innings of a televised game have, or the last quarter of a uh, basketball, they really didn't mean anything for a lot of people until DraftKings. Yeah, it certainly, you know, keeps you engaged with right. the game until the very end every night. And I think that's something that we really go for in the game design. You know, how can we keep players engaged throughout the entire night? You know, give them excitement every time somebody scores, every big play. You know, that's something that we're looking to create in terms of the experience. And I know uh, this deal hasn't closed with ESPN, but obviously ESPN is a virtuous circle for them, too, because they have games that otherwise you might not be interested in or, or a rundown after the game that you would be riveted to now. Yeah, so ESPN has been a marketing partner of ours for a while, and uh, I think, like you said, they, they have a lot of sports content, right. so they've always been very interested in fantasy. Um, I can't comment specifically on the right. deal, uh, but... Uh, right now, I think ESPN is the leader, really, in fantasy. Um, they, they've become the uh, company most than, and more than any that's identified with fantasy and identified with sports. Now, Matt, do you think that when I see the some of these, you know, some of the games, like or NASCAR, like, do you think, geez, you know, it's lucky that there's a carve out because some of it is kind of like a way to gamble, in legally. I think that you know. We operate 10 sports right now. They all have huge fan followings. And whenever there's something big in sports, we want to, you know, find a way to participate. You know, obviously staying within you know, the boundaries that, that we feel like we need to. Right. Now, uh, for baseball, uh, I'm throwing out the baseball tomorrow for the, for the Phillies. I just had to say it. I had to work it in. That's all I really Make have to sure say about that. Make sure you throw a strike. <laughs> I've been practicing. I, I can't really go. But are there play, players, are games like that you're not, where you're not normally be interested? Because, like, I never really like to watch a non-Philly game, to be honest. But there, this is one of those things where you want to watch out-of-market games. 
because you don't really care as much every about the home game, team. Every game, every play matters. You were talking about before the end of the game, sometimes it's a blowout or something like that. This makes every single play of every game matter, and it keeps you engaged everywhere across the entire league. And by the way, on the point of throwing out the first pitch, on DraftKings, you can win throwing out the first pitch in a Major League Baseball game. Really? Yeah. Holy cow. Okay, well, I got to re re I mean, like You don't need it. You already have that. So. But for everybody else. So. All right. Last question. I know you, uh, MLB's got a stake in you guys. Uh, ESPN reported. I mean, I would love to have a lot of our viewers going to watch and say, when is DraftKings going to come public? I really want to own stock. Is, any desire to do that? You're having such a good time. Uh, you know, right now we're looking at a lot of different options, but that's probably the last thing on our mind. We're just trying to build a great business right. and engage sports fans. Um, however it ends, I think will be uh, hopefully, well, that's not really the ending, but however ultimately some of our early investors right. exit will be the easy part. Yeah, I, I, let me tell you something. You're having too good a time to come public. <laughs> Let's, money's not everything, all right? Good enough. Thank you, guys. That's Jason Robbins and Matt Kalis, co-founders of DraftKings. They came up with this, not you, and that's the way you really have to look at it. That money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.